Welcome back to my study and to Dongit's model railway. I have a large gap in my layout. It starts on the south side of the layout with a middle and upper running surface end and continues around the corner to the middle of the east side where the running surface begins again. There's a lot of track on the lower level here with both the storage yard and the ramp climbing up from the yard taking up almost all the horizontal space. This means there's not much available baseboard structure to tie the upper levels into and I'm going to have to do something non-conventional to solve this problem. I'm starting by attaching horizontals onto the wall. This allows me to use the wall studs as supports for the outside upper part of the layout. I say horizontal, but very little of this is actually level, as it mostly follows the gradient between the junction and the terminus. The notches are to accept cross beams I will add later. I have added a triangular brace between the two wall buttons here. This runs almost directly below the curve towards the station throat, so it is ideally placed to support this part of the track. I have replaced this part of the front frame with some 3x1 rather than the previously used 2x1. This honestly wasn't necessary, but I had 3x1 spare and needed the 2x1 for other parts of the build. The first parts of the support structure are also being installed. These are not sufficiently supported at the moment and would easily twist downwards if any weight was put on them. I need to join these points together to make this strong enough to support the baseboard surface. A ply sandwich either side of here will be well strong enough. I have the opportunity to tie in here for added strength too, but I have to watch clearance required to the outermost track on the lower level. The shape of the required piece of ply is not straightforward. Time for some cardboard aided design. I'm cutting a template out using an old moving box. I've got a basic idea of what this piece needs to look like but the exact distances and clearances aren't known yet. So the first cutout will be a rough estimate. I can put the template in place on the layout and test its fitment. I can adjust the template really easily with a pair of scissors or a knife. And if I cut away too much, I can take bits back on. Or if I've really stuffed it up, get another bit of cardboard and make another template. Old cardboard boxes are effectively free. Fresh sheets of ply are not. With some small adjustments, it now fits into the space required and hits all of the support points it needs to. I've checked the two cross beams are horizontal as well. The clearance to the outer track here is critical. The tallest trains on my layout are electrics running with a raised pantograph, so I'm comparing the clearance to a catenary mast. Any electric with raised pantographs is going to have to clear these anyway, so they are a good benchmark to test against. While there isn't a lot of space here, it gets above the wire height well to the side of the track, so I think we can use this extra tie-in point. Every train coming into the storage yard will pass through here. If I get this wrong, the entire yard is out of bounds to an entire category of trains. I've traced round the cardboard onto the ply. There's two identical copies of it on the ply, one for either side of the sandwich. All that remains is to trace around the complex shape with the jigsaw. Working out how to slot the new ply pieces in isn't trivial. The cardboard obviously just bends, which makes test fitting it very easy. The ply does not bend and I need to work out the right angle of approach. Test fitting the ply pieces is also not going as planned. I think where the box corner was in the cardboard had a Z-shaped wrinkle in it when I was test fitting it, and when I traced round it I'd flattened this out. This would make the entire piece slightly longer than it should have been. Ironically, the only one of these supports that I fully shot as the detailed example to put in the video is the one that did this to me. The other five supports worked out nearly perfectly with only minor revisions required in the ply. But this specific one was an absolute pain. This happened on both sides, and the modifications needed to both sides were the same. It was definitely a template problem, not a drawing or cutting problem. The process is the same with ply as it is with cardboard. Test fit the piece. Draw where it collides with anything, cut some off, try fitting it again, draw what it now hits on, repeat until it goes in without hitting anything, and sits level and square where it is expected to sit. Only ply takes ages to work with, whereas cardboard is easy. I think I just needed to start with a better bit of cardboard this time.
I'm happy with how this fits now. I just need to make sure the horizontals are perfectly level before securing it all in place. This is done using a spirit level and a careful eye. I don't have one of the fancy ones that makes the noise. I am using my normal construction method of just screwing things together. This is pilot hole, countersink and screw. I find I don't need a clearance hole in ply. After it's countersunk there's not enough thickness that the clearance hole matters. This has the advantage that I can leave the clamp on throughout the whole process. Very handy for keeping everything straight and level. The key points are now secured, but the piece is still a bit mobile and doesn't feel particularly firm yet. The real strength of this construction comes from the sandwich structure. It won't feel strong until the other side is fitted too. When attaching the other side panel, remember that the new holes must not hit any of the existing screws you just put in. Drill the pilot holes in different positions. Drilling into a screw is a really quick way to break a drill bit, and it doesn't make a useful screw hole either. The finished article with ply both sides is very stiff and strong. The strength comes from the design of the structure, 
and is greater than any of the individual elements. I have three more of these to build before the gap in the layout is closed, and I can connect the running surface around the room. These cannot attach at the lower front as there is either track or electronics in the way, and the lower rear is inaccessible due to the reduction in clearance as the ramp descends towards the storage yard too. I've put a couple of notches in the mid-level supports on the east side. There is a yard throat here, and these notches are near where the tie bars of the points will be. No matter what I do with the design of this yard throat, there will always be a point motor either near or on a support somewhere. And even if I make them all just miss, having access holes and additional clearance will help a lot when fitting the point motors. Remember, there's a deck below here which also has track on it. I can't just roll under here on my car creeper and look up at the bottom of the board like I could on the lowest level. I'm going to tie these two risers together with a piece connecting them at high level. This is right underneath the far end of the carriage sidings, which are built up in this area to allow them to be flat. While I've got the cardboard templates in place, it's a good idea to test the clearance from the tracks below. As you can see, even with the extra depth to clear the point motor above, there's loads of clearance here. My goal was to have room to get an arm in between the train below and a point motor above, and it looks like I'm well beyond that. I've traced around all three templates twice. Two of them are slightly different where the left and right side needed modifications so that the upper support can pass through one side and connect directly to the other. No, this isn't hitting the deck. I've got a square frame from an old sandpit spacing the wood up from the deck. The sandpit frame has indeed had a nibble or two from the jigsaw, but I don't mind as I would have thrown it out anyway if it wasn't being used for this. This video is much longer than my previous videos. Do people like the additional detail, or are you put off by the length? I guess I'll find out after I publish it and find out if people watch to the end. really must remember to do the internet video maker things as well as just model railway things. Please use the like button, leave me some comments, and subscribe to the channel. If you are on YouTube and you want to know when I upload a new video, there's also a notification bell you need to ring. If you aren't on YouTube and you're watching on one of the other services I upload to, that's great too. Please share those videos and spread that around. I'm not getting anywhere near as much traction on those sites as I am on YouTube. Here are the supports mocked up. They all fit really easily with very little modification required. The cardboard template did its job this time. The next support is now installed, with the upper flat area for the carriage siding starting to appear. Access is tight in this back corner. To get access to drill the hole for this screw, I needed to move this support bar out of the way. Oh, this is one of the reasons I don't use much glue. I keep finding reasons I need to move things about later, whether that's temporarily or permanently. All of the supports are now installed and ready to go. There's just a few last bits of wood to install before I'm done with the frames entirely and can get the tops installed, and get back to track laying, and electronics. See you next time up here in the study at Dongit's Model Railway.